Hello friends, welcome to the Legion Raid guide series featuring Akan. Akan is a 3 gate Legion Raid, accessible in normal mode at 1580 eye level and hard mode at 1600 eye level. Defeat Akan to receive eyeballs for gear transfer, similar to Bro Shaza. This raid features troublesome follow-up attacks, making overall uptime very crucial. The guide covers normal patterns, DPS uptime tricks, and supporting strategies in detail, and including differences between difficulties. For those seeking a quick overview, the fourth video in this guide series will provide brief summary, covering the major mechanics in simple terms. I also want to give a special thanks to our friends at Mobilytics, who assisted with the special effects to bring this guide to life. Be sure to check out their written guides in the video's description. Gate 3 Akan has new and enhanced normal patterns from Gate 2. This gate has universal mechanics, the Plague Meter, Zombie Player, and the Lantern. Required battle items are Sacred Charm or Sacred Bomb. Bombs have more charges, but they need to be thrown. Cleansing stuns are so important. Don't hesitate to use them to free party mates. Other battle items like Time Stop and Dark Bombs are recommended as well. As for the universal mechanics, the Plague Meter operates the same way, but there are no gazes. All dead players will be revived by a Khan to fight along his sides periodically, then turn into a suicide bomber if they're not killed. Class AI is going to fight, so the player's build don't really matter. And at the beginning of the fight, Wei will provide you a Khan's lantern. If you pick it up with the G key, you can go inside into another realm. These plague pools outside will give you plague meter if you stand on them. But on the other realm, the pool's core will show up. You can use the Q laser to destroy the core to remove the pool. Any players can pick up the lantern to go inside, but generally you have one player focusing on cleaning the insides. We can call them the lantern god roll. While you're inside, ghosts will follow you consistently. You can only temporarily kill them with the Q laser and the W purify beams. On hard mode, there will also be a lady ghoul where she can fear you as well. She can't be killed, only petrified temporarily with the W lantern skill. The map is divided into three large ring groups. The pool's logic is, the initial pool generation is about 1 every 10 seconds and it will always spawn at the outermost ring. Each pool itself has an internal clock that expands itself to the inner ring every 10 seconds. Outside players getting hit too much to receive a plate stack will force a pool spawn. It can either expand or create new ones on the outer ring. After 140 lines, the initial pool generation is increased to 2 every 10 seconds. The goal is to clear the eggs as fast as you can to provide a clean battleground for your team. The better lantern god you have in the team, the easier the raid is going to be. If you have nobody that can clean properly, your team is doomed. It is absolutely possible to keep the whole field clean throughout the fight. For potential lantern god players, follow these tips to make sure your performance is top notch. While picking up or dropping the lantern, you become invincible. Drop the lantern intentionally and pick it up again before the plague meter fills up to avoid stuns. You can't see anything in a short time, but you can still control your character. Delete eggs if you remember where they were. Your lantern god roll limit is around 3 to 4 place stacks, since 5th stacks is a guaranteed death. Utilize Inanna timings properly to make sure to cleanse yourself before getting a stack. You can get Inanna's effect even on the inside. Generally, rotate one direction, positioning yourself around in the middle ring. You'll be able to see all possible play egg spawns. Minimize the Q skill animation to quickly move to the next egg. You can kite and move per tick as well. Moving in a steady path with the fastest clean attempts is enough to keep the whole map clean. When the ghoul lady is nearby, petrify her with the W skill and proceed to move on. You must keep on moving to kite the mobs. If all else fails, you can always drop the lantern and come back later, but you will get some meter. When eggs are just spawning, make sure to kill them immediately. Plague Pool does not spawn right away, so you can actually kill two eggs at once if you stick closer to the spawning egg. You can also sacrifice some meter to kill two eggs at once if you position yourself correctly. Swiftness character tends to be better due to W cooldown being impacted by the Swiftness stat. About 600 is needed. Even on slow progression, only one player is needed for the whole role. Since they're not going to fight as much, switching your engraving to heavy armor or vital points is also a good idea. Some players prepare full stagger builds for this role as well. The boss's major mechanics are 200, x laser stagger, 165, double red, green, purple laser carry, 140, hexagon or star-shaped statues, 125, awaken a con, enhance AoE and curses, 30, wave survival to final phase, Zero, destruction mechanic. There is also a hard mode only hidden phase. 300, second phase starts. 235, Akan smash. 200, stage flipping water waves. 135, second Akan smash. At the start of the fight, Akan will always jump and smash in. 
If someone is hit, he will do an additional smash. Careful not to miss your dark bombs here. As mentioned, Wei will also deliver the lantern as well. No need to pick them up until the first major mechanic is finished. At 200 lines, a Khan will disappear. Then he will teleport to the middle, spawning four statues at X position. These statues will fire orange laser and you need to intercept them or you won't be able to stagger him through his shield. The laser will hurt more the longer you block them. After the first few seconds, small razor blades will fall from the sky with a red indicator. In hard mode, there will also be a large guillotine marked in arrow warning signs. All these are guaranteed deaths if hit. General procedure is to divide in groups of two and block the laser to stagger a little bit. Dodge lasers and guillotines first and getting back to block the laser and stagger. After two explosions, there will be a second set of guillotines and razors. Sometimes stagger finishes before the second set of guillotines and razors. If the stagger is far from done after the second explosion though, it is important to walk out to dodge the second set first. Support's awakening should be done after the first explosion after the first set of razor blades, since that timing is when things hurt a lot. Prioritize shields and heals during progression. At 165 lines, Akan teleports to 3 o'clock. Then he will spawn human sacrifices at the 9 o'clock with the tower and two additional towers on 12 and 6 o'clock. The 12 and 6 o'clock powers will fire an orange laser at Akan that spawns ring explosion throughout the map if not intercepted. Top spawns inner ring and the bottom spawns outer explosion. Akan will fire a green laser to the humans. If not intercepted, Akan will devour all their energy and recover his health back. The purple laser at 9 o'clock can be touched and be carried around. Three skull icons indicate your time limit for carrying the laser. Each skull slows you down and last third one will teleport you back to the start. The goal is to alternate between players to carry the laser all the way to a con to disable shield to stagger and then finish the mechanic. Swiftness classes tend to be better and artists can use their portals to cheese the mechanic at a much faster pace. At 140 lines, Akan will port to the center. He will spawn a large magic circle and spawn 6 statues around the map. Two of these statues will be spawned inside. Therefore, the player with the Lantern God roll needs to activate them by staggering with the Q skill. Outside players will need to stagger the other 4 statues to activate them. They pulse in large AoE explosions, so you have to be aware. If all of them are staggered and activated properly, the camera will zoom out. You will need to rotate the statues to form a shape. The finishing shape will either be a hexagon or a star. Easiest way to find out is the 1 o'clock statue will always spawn outside and it will either fire horizontally or vertically or diagonally. If it fires horizontally or vertically, the final shape is going to be a star and if it fires diagonally, it's a hexagon. Players on the 1 o'clock statue can call out the shape for the team. As for the hexagon shape, the laser will need to fire counterclockwise. Players will need to press the G key to rotate the statue. The statue spawned outside will always rotate 90 degrees, while statues spawned inside will always rotate 45 degrees. Going into the details, there are three combinations of potential statue spawns. Since there are only three combinations and limited rotation angles, based on the 1 o'clock variable of horizontal vertical laser or diagonal laser, there are six known patterns for the statue formation. Due to this, if 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock statues tend to be inside, they often come out as finished. For example, sometimes the 5 o'clock statue will point at 12 o'clock, finishing up the hexagon without any effort. However, if someone presses the G key for this, it's going to make it overturn, requiring 6 more taps to get it into position, often resulting in wipe by running out of time. So keep in mind if you're 5 or 7 o'clock position, make sure to not rotate it right away, it might be correct already. Most raids predetermine position on the workshop for the statues. On hard mode, there will also be guillotines on top, mid, and bottom rows. These will one-shot you, so make sure to call out the guillotine positions. These positions are the areas I recommend being active, and do not be near these positions because the guillotine can drop right on top of you. As for preventing accidental laser depths, be sure to stay behind the laser towers and use a spacebar to jump over the lasers during rotation. Black lasers hurt a lot more than white lasers, and lasers turn white when they're correct. After the statue mechanic, Akan will awaken to phase 2. You will be fighting Akan till 33 lines for the final phase. He will have time-based special patterns throughout the fight. My tip is to always be prepared to look at the minimap whenever Akan teleports away. This indicates he will be doing a special map-wide AoE pattern. Let's go over them all. Slimes and Enhanced Slimes You will see this pattern before the laser or statue mechanic if DPS push wasn't sufficient enough. Akan will start chanting and spawn tentacles and one slime on the map. The slime will fire poison pools that will do an insane amount of damage. You must kill it ASAP. 
Tentacles also hurt a lot if you're hit by multiple of them. Getting rid of them is a good idea for an easier fight. After the statue mechanic, the slime pattern is enhanced if he does it again. After a con teleports to the center, see if it's emitting a green smoke instead of a green magic circle. He also faces the top side. Those are the indicators of the enhanced slime attack. This attack is a number one raid resetter. There will be a three map wide explosion with the same slime spawn and tentacles. Get your time stop ready if you have them. The exact explosions are plus from a con, sharp shaped, and then square shaped ring explosion. So when you identify a slime explosion is coming, make sure to stand 5 or 7 o'clock positions based on where a con is facing. Use the back indicator as reference point. There are cheese spots for you as well, which is at the very end of the wall where the plus explosions were. You can dodge rest of the explosions if you stand there. Other than that, the correct dodging would be diagonal, standing on the far side of the plus, and going inside right outside of a con's poison circle. Skulls. After a con teleports to the center, see if it's emitting a magic circle instead of a smoke. Also facing bottom. This is a green and white skull pattern. A con will spawn a bunch of green skulls around the map and a homing white skull fired from a con, traveling very slowly to the nearest player. Stay far away and focus dodging. This pattern's difficulty is based on how clean the map is from the pools. Green skulls will increase your meters a lot and white skull will fear you, so watch out for stunts. Wave attack. If a con does not teleport to the center, you must look at the minimap. He will either teleport at the end of plus positions on the map. He will charge up and throw a map wide AoE wave attack. It also spawns a bunch of ad bugs as well. When the waves are done, he will teleport behind someone to cast an instant death next slice. Everyone should gather up at the opposite wall to force him to teleport at the end of the map for DPS opportunity. Curses. A con will cast a curse with a dialogue. There are red, blue, green, and black curses. Along with the curse, he will always fire an aim laser that can knock off the players very far away that can cause instant deaths. Red Curse will choose two random players. They need to separate as far as they can or they will be mind controlled to their death. This can be CC to break them free. Range limit is indicated in one of the player. Blue Curse will choose two random players. They will need to stay as close as possible to prevent tethers being broken. If they move too far away, they will be mind controlled to their death. This can also be CC to break them free. Range limit is a large outer ring. Green Curse will choose 4 random players. 3 green pools will spawn periodically under your feet. The tether laser itself will give you plague meters to anyone touching it. It is important to stay relatively close to your partner and throw the poison pools away from the center. Black Curse will choose 3 random players. The tether laser itself will provide heavy damage and anyone who gets too far will instantly kill all the tether players. This is the most dangerous curse that can instantly kill 3 people. Correct procedure is to group up and keep positioning on a con's back. Even if one of them is aggroed, it is crucial to avoid his follow-up laser because it will knock you out and then kill the rest of the players. Addition to these special random patterns, he will also have a different set of normal patterns throughout the fight. I will explain them more in detail at the normal pattern section. But simply, he will be firing laser blasts very often. My tip is that every time he dashes away or teleports, expect that he's going to fire a laser blast at someone. Always DPS after a con fires his lasers. This laser blast pattern happens very very often. Lastly, there's guillotines coming down from the sky that travels horizontally or vertically. You must dodge these as well. When you reach 32 bars, a con will teleport to the middle and start smashing the ground. You can stand at 5 or 7 o'clock position to not get hit by it. Then a cutscene will start with many minions climbing up the tower. You will fight them at the small circular surface, where fall death is possible. A con then will start firing lasers while minions are consistently rushing to the players. He will either fire rotating lasers, sideway lasers, or frontal blasts. All these lasers can be dodged as long as you stay behind Akan's back. You will need to drop his HP to 0 or 15, depending on what the raid team wants to do. When his bar reaches 15 or under, you can use Esther Wei anytime to finish the fight. Wei will appear and execute Akan for you. If he happens to drop his HP to 0, the final destruction phase will start. Akan will try to recover himself and do a series of ring or cone explosions that can knock you off. You will need to dodge them and apply destruction to Akan. One Thyrain is enough to finish this mechanic, but people tend to use Inanna and apply destruction slowly to prevent unnecessary deaths. First explosion is always an inside circle. In hard mode, Akan has a hidden face. We will go over this as well. If you're planning to do normal only, feel free to skip this section. After a cutscene, everyone's plague meter will reset and a giant Akan will appear on a square map. This is a drownable map unless you fall where Akan is, which is instant death. 
A combo always casts a black spear fog attack at the start of the fight. You can either stay right close to him and receive some plague meter or stay very far back. The fog will generate two tentacles on the field and a warm debuff on a random person. If you destroy the tentacles, you will receive additional stagger damage that can help stagger him to destroy his armor. If you destroy his armor 3 times, you will do 200% more damage. One person will receive the warm debuff. After the timer runs out, the player with the debuff will spawn a warm portal under their feet. Stepping on this will activate the warm and it will grab anyone who is stepping on it. You will need to place this warm at the rear end of the corner or somewhere safe where people won't step on them. There are various normal patterns that are grabs, lasers, and waves. The trick is, always go to where his arm is and contact with the ground. That's where all the safe spot is. Waves have yellow indicators that can potentially knock you off. As for lasers, only tricky one is when he gets his lasers ready in both hands. This is a center laser, stay on the sides. When he rotates to change position, stay on the hand where he is grabbing a pillar for the safe spot. When you push the con to about 235, you will see 1 to 3 worms spawning based on the party's DPS. A con will raise his hands far up and the camera will back up a little bit. You will need to go inside the worm on purpose or use Esther and Nana to survive the smash. The warm entering timing is not super tight. Just gather up in front of the warm and enter together. After the first Akan smash and reaching 200 bars, he will change positions and grab the stage. He will flip the stage over to one side to make everyone slide and fall. You will need to walk up to the opposite end to prevent yourself from falling. There will also be plague muds that will cause you to slip. Akan will scratch or fire a laser. If he scratches, he will always fire a laser afterwards. After that, he will flip the stage to the other side and do the patterns again. If you survive all of this, he will return back to the normal patterns. If you happen to get hit and fall out, you can actually use the minigame to stay in the water long enough to skip the mechanic. Second account smash will happen around 135 lines. Make sure you have at least one or two worms on standby during the fight. If you don't happen to have a worm ready and people push it too far by accident, you can purposely get knocked off to the waters to survive the smash. If the fight goes long enough and there are dead players, Akan will resurrect them as zombies again. The summoning lasers push you far off with lots of plague meter gains, so you need to stay right beside Akan at the corner to dodge them. Afterwards, there are no more special mechanics. You need to push Akan to zero to finish the raid. As for Esther, unless you've used it earlier for Inanna for a con smash, you can fill up one more time around the end before the fight going berserk. Wei does about 50 bars, and using it at the corner is most effective, especially when there are zombie players as well. The Docho's AoE is large enough to wipe everyone off. Now let's talk about normal patterns. This section can be skipped entirely, but the key to finishing this raid is based on how much everyone masters the normal patterns, to push a con fast enough while not getting hit to generate too much plague meter. I will go over counters then patterns that give you plague meters on both phases, then patterns not give plague meters. I suggest everyone to at least take a close attention to the counters and the plague meter patterns. Before going over the normal patterns, if anyone ever gets stunned during the fight, Akan will always teleport behind the player and initiate an instant death next slice attack that can also heal Akan. Make sure to cleanse people quickly if they're stunned. Side wind up counter. This counter is critical. If failed, he will fire an insane amount of green skulls while rotating, finishing up with a side spin. Many people can get shotgunned or plague stunned with the skulls. This wind up is the same from gate 2. Make sure to memorize this to counter it consistently. If missed or internal cooldown, stay behind them at all times. Back Scythe Counter Akan will send his scythe at the back and crouch. If this is failed, he will dash front and uppercut really high to spawn green skulls falling from the sky. These will also give you a lot of plague meter. Back Step to Counter If Akan slides backwards with the green mists, it's always a counter. Failing this isn't much of a penalty since it's a simple dash to slice attack like gate 2. Rotating Pizza Akan will float up and cast a pizza attack like gate 2. This time, it will rotate and explode 5 times. You can identify the rotation by the spinning red skulls. If you can't make it in time, make sure to use your time stop to prevent your death or plague meter stacks. For supports, make sure to be keen on cleansing or save your guardian tune for this specific pattern. Triple Slam Akan will slam front twice at an aggro player, then slam behind them. Then he will spit out two large cone blasts on his side. The cone blast will fill up plague meter, so always stay in front or behind Akan when you see him slamming his sight with a circular effect. Jump to plus and X explosion. Akan will jump high up and his sight will glow green, and proceed to slam on an aggro player. He will keep his sight on the ground and cause a plus explosion. 
then he will stab the ground again and make it an X explosion. Make sure to check where his impact is and stand diagonal then move inwards behind him. Outside save, inside save. Akan will scratch the floor and spawn a green portal. The scythe from the portal will slam downwards for an outside save, inside save explosion. Walk inside after the initial explosion. The side to 270 laser. Akan will launch his scythe in the air and spread his arm to a sideway laser to frontal. When the lasers are gathered, he will spin 270 degrees. There's a safe spot on the front now right before the laser beats up for rotation. Reviving laser. When someone is dead, Akan will revive him. During his summon ritual, he will fire a series of triple lasers in front of him. It's almost impossible to dodge from the front, so stay far or at the back. After the second phase, there are many variations for the laser blasts. If you always keep in mind that there will be laser blasts and DPS during the blast animation, you will have no problem with uptime. Back dash to laser blast. This is a variation of his laser blast after a back step. Phasing to a laser blast, Akan will have a weird flying animation phasing everywhere. He will always do a dash to a laser blast after this animation. Earthquake, Akan will hold his scythe vertically and proceed to slam on the ground. This circle explosion will stun you. Akan's larger explosion version will have him charge up even further up. Always make sure to stay far away from this or there will be stunned players that will have Akan to do a next slice follow up attack. Double Earthquake Slam, Akan will slam the ground. The scythe will glow green for this and disappear to slam on the ground again from the air. Both of these slams can stun you. The first will have enough time for people to avoid the next slice, but getting hit by the second slam requires cleanse. Quad Slam Akan will prepare to slam at an aggro player. The slam will create fire waves coming out from the scythe. He will do this four times. It is important for the aggro player to keep the head position still. Making it rotate is very very bad. Poison Pizza Akan will hold his scythe up and charge up. You will see green laser effects. When you see this, always stay behind him till he slashes. After the slash, you will see poison indicators on the floor before the explosion. Big Scythe Swing Akan will hold a giant scythe and charge up. Staying close to him is a safe spot. 270 Scythe Throw Akan will spin his scythe around and do a frontal slash. You must stay in front of Akan during this or the multiple hits may kill you from full HP. Rings to Lines Akan will smash the ground, showing many green ring indicators, then explode. Afterwards, he will scratch the sights towards him. He will make multiple line indicators exploding. Akan's front and back positions are safe throughout the whole pattern, but don't get too close. Uppercut to grab. Akan will look at a player and proceed to uppercut. If you get hit, you'll be grabbed. He will dash away quickly somewhere else and start a stagger check. If you fail to stagger, the player who is grabbed will be killed. Stab to grab. Akan will aim at a player, phasing a little bit, and stab the player. Stab player will be lifted up with a stagger check. You must succeed to stagger or the stab player will get heavy damage. Side spin. Regular side spin where left of the con is safe on initial throw. Side throw to slam. A con will scratch the floor and throw his scythe as a boomerang. After catching it, he will slam the floor. Jump slam. A con will fly up and slam at the player. This is a pattern you'll see at the beginning of the fight. If nobody gets hit by the first hit though, he will turn around and do an uppercut slash. As for Esther's, there's no real set in stone method of using them. Generally, everyone uses Esther and Nana for plague meter management. Make sure you coordinate your Esther with the Lantern God player to make sure to help him drain the meter out before getting a stack. You can use the Esther four times if the raid time is used at full. First Inanna is often used at the purple laser phase because it fills up around that time and this helps the blockers to safely block lasers for a longer period of time. Afterwards, you'll get another Esther chance after the statue mechanic. Unless you're an overgear party with good uptime, most parties' third Esther is way at 15 lines. If clearing is troublesome, you can use Nanna again to push as far as you can. But you may have to go through the destruction mechanic at 0 bars. You gain about 20% per minute and the 33 bar cutscene gives you the 20% and if you happen to reach the 0 bar mechanic, it gives you 50% Esther meter. Meaning as long as you use your Esther meter before 4 minutes left to the clock, you can always use Wei before Berserk happens. With that being said, this concludes Gate 3 of a Khan Legion Raid. A Khan Legion Raid prioritizes battle over complex mechanics. Mastering normal patterns and maintaining general uptime are crucial for successful clear. Study the attack animations to avoid getting hit, maintain your plague meter, and find a good Lantern God player to make your raids easier. As always, thanks everyone, bye bye!